morning environmental studies related to environmental education a concept which is need of the hour environmental education improves our knowledge motivates us gives social and emotional skills improves our academic skills creates civic interest and engagement this is what we can say what is environmental studies environmental studies is a topic which deals about our environment our surroundings nature of earth water related issues our temperature rainfall forest resources global warming disaster management human rights so it connects man and environment that's the point i want to insist in other words environmental studies refer to the study of the occurrence of physical processes in natural settings it invests investigate everything that can affect living things such as our population our energy conservation our water management biodiversity climate change etc etc we can say so what is the environmental issues issues which relates to the environment issues which are affects human endeavors in the natural surrounding it is an action initiated due to the human influence in the environment whatever we do no we activate we, we do something in the environment for our needs in turn it becomes an environmental issue so this has to be focused and these environmental issues to be solved when and there there is a need see water problem is an environmental issue climate change is an environmental issue natural disaster is an environmental issue deforestation is an environmental issue so like that we have a lot of environmental issues these issues were created by man due to the influence in the natural surroundings by man's activities every activity of man creates an environmental issue that's the uh, concept behind this so how to solve environmental issues thus that we have to consider and we have to change our behavior and our attitudes to reduce environmental issues so for this concept we have to see lot of topics related to environmental studies biodiversity one of the important area in which we have to concentrate the concept of biodiversity refers to not only the wealth that exists in nature but also the wellness of the nature it is about the wellness it is about living and non living in the environment the role played by living and non living so we need living and non living there is a connectivity between between living and non living there is a coexistence between the two we can say in in technical terms we can say biotic and abiotic concepts so which deals with biodiversity We have we 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 should take care of animals. We should take care of pet animals. We take we should take care of insects, birds, our forests, plants, trees, etc., etc. For the betterment of biodiversity, loss of biodiversity reduces nature's capacity to maintain a good environment. Loss of biodiversity reduces nature's capacity to maintain a good environment. so we should insist for biodiversity there are biodiversity parks there are biodiversity forests that has to be maintained that is the point we need to do some examples of visuals of biodiversity frog 
birds, duck are all interconnected. They have some, all our living organisms have some interconnectedness and they should have some coexistence. That's what biodiversity says. Some other visuals which incorporates biodiversity. We will now move to energy use. There are many different kinds of energy can be discovered on the planet. These energy has to be conserved. Energy conservation is a major area when we use energy. The conception of energy is unquestionably the most significant contributor to greenhouse gas output that results from modern activity on a global basis. Studies on environment have shown that lowering energy consumption results in a decreased demand for fossil fuels resulting in reduced amounts of greenhouse gas in the air. So energy use should be monitored. We will move to deforestation. Removing forest areas is called deforestation. Why we are removing that? For the need of human survival, we are thinning the forest. But there is a limit for everything. We should maintain. We should restrict our requirements. We should change our attitude. Then only we can maintain forests. There are a lot of forest clearance for human use. Including removal of trees of, for wood products, for paper manufacturing. In the practice of clear cutting, all the trees are removed from the land. It completely destroys the forest. So forest is a major need. We should avoid deforestation. For the betterment of bio biodiversity, forest is the major concept to be monitored and to be well maintained for the human survival, especially for the living and non-living. To maintain living and non-living, we need forests. For, for a better climate, for a better change or a, for a holistic perception in human life, we need forest. So deforestation increases mosquito population. This is one of the effects, effects of uh, deforestation. So it creates side effects. Then now we will move to ecological succession. Ecological succession is a series of changes in an ecological system over a time period. There is a change in, in nature. There is a changeover in nature. That is what we call as ecological succession. There is a changeover in the setting, in the ecosystem. That is what we can call eco, ecological succession. There are two concepts, primary succession and secondary succession. See, in a open land with rocks, there is a development gradually. The bare rock becomes greeny, then it becomes small plants, then it becomes grasses, then it becomes shrubs, then, then it becomes trees. So it takes hundreds of years. This is what we can, we call, we, uh, we call it as primary succession. It needs a lot of time. So in a open land with rock, with climate change, lot of changes appears in the rock surface. The rock surface later on becomes a greeny environment with a huge forest. But it, but it takes hundreds of years for the process. And whereas secondary section is a process, in, it, it happens only after some calamity or after some fire fire uh, after some uh, natural disasters, uh, something in the earth became damaged due to some natural calamity or due to some fire, nature gets damaged. So every natural element became decayed. So nothing is there. So in that process, after a process, after some changes or after some events in the nature, Again, from the scratch, the decayed elements 
are developing and growing into forest and growing into green environment so the second process is called secondary succession it also takes lot of years one of years three four years or 150 years or more than 150 years so what is the difference between primary and secondary succession primary succession is the uh, development from the scratch from the beginning it's a it's a opening but where a secondary succession is a process it it happens after some events after some natural calamity or after some fire after some incident nature transforms into its original place that's we call that we call it as secondary succession let's move to air pollution you know air pollution we need oxygen for our uh, uh better uh, living so we are polluting human activities are are polluting the air by 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 driving by using two wheeler by using four wheelers lot of vehicles lot of transportation we are doing every day due to transportation and due to manufacturing in chemical industries we are creating this air pollution so air pollution is is very dangerous it has to be restricted it has to be maintained when we how we will how we will restrict we have to reduce our activities in one way or other we have to reduce our daily activities we have to reduce driving or something like that we have to reduce our uh, pollution process that's why it is it is it is one of the important uh, areas to be considered air pollution is the greatest environmental threat to public health globally and accounts for an estimated 7 million premature deaths every year so every year there are death so air pollution and climate change are closely linked as all major pollutants have an impact on the climate so it it affects our health so we need to monitor if you have if you have if we, we have good air we will have, we will have good environmental benefits if you, if you provide fresh air then your health will be better you will have good food you will have good rain you will have a holistic uh, living so air pollution needs to be avoided with for example with every breath we take we suck in tiny particles that can damage our lungs hearts and brains and cause host of other health problems the most dangerous of these particles which can include anything from soot soil dust sulfates or fine particles 2.5 microns or less in diameter shortened as pm 2.5 so even though air pollution is a global problem we need our responsibility to monitor and restrict air pollution what is the energy crisis in urban system this is one one area we have to concentrate why energy crisis comes in urban area because of lot of human activities we have a lot of manufacturing industries in the city we have car manufacturing two wheeler manufacturing we have construction sites we have chemical industries like fertilizer factories atomic power plants and electronic goods manufacturing so a lot of areas are there so we we automatically uh, forced to energy crisis so in urban areas energy is consumed mostly in the form of electricity the demand for electricity in the country has increased by 50% in recent years an energy crisis or energy shortage is any significant bottleneck in the supply of energy resources to an economy so how to solve energy crisis change over of human attitude change over of protection of our environment we will solve we can use alternate resources for energy crisis we can use solar power we can use wind mill so etc there are a lot of uh, uh, alternative uh, biogas we have lot of uh, uh, alternate solutions for energy crisis so crisis to be managed in one way that is called crisis management see how electricity short shortage occurs because of heating cooking and water supply therefore a sustained energy crisis may become an humanitarian crisis so if we have energy crisis we we need to uh, monitor and we we need to protect by crisis management
that's why crisis management is a process to solve the energy crisis so we when you conserve energy we can solve energy crisis so let's move to energy conservation that's why i am i want to uh, tell something about energy conservation that is very important very it is related to crisis management and energy use energy conservation is important to crisis management as well as energy use so energy conservation is a effort to reduce wasteful energy consumption by using fewer energy services energy conservation can be achieved through efficient energy use how to use energy efficiently how to use our water resources efficiently how to use our electricity usage efficiently that's what energy conservation says green engineering practices improve the life cycle of the components of machines which convert energy from one form into another energy can be conserved by reducing waste and losses improving efficiency through technological upgrades improving operations and maintenance so energy conservation can be prolonged by maintaining our resources changing users behavior will 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 increase energy conservation we can plan our prime time peak hours leisure hours to operate our resources we can reduce the timing of uh, our energy usage we can reduce the time of energy usage in in such way we can conserve energy then then let's move to forest resources already i discussed about deforestation and the need of forest and forest importance of forest now we will discuss what are the forest resources available so forests are complex land ecosystem that support a wide variety of plants trees and animals it provides a lot of resources like fruits timber firewood honey herbal medicines forest also provide several raw materials for different manufacturing industries we need forest living and non living need forest many animals need forest to live and survive forests are very important and grow in many places around the world we have lot of forest in india tamil nadu kerala karnataka and in northern states we have forest so government should maintain the forest and it should be not used for commercial purposes it should be commercial purpose of forest should be reduced commercial crops should be reduced to maintain good forest resources so forest provides a large number of commercial goods but it should be reduced which include timber firewood pulp wood food items gums resins non edible oils rubber fibers lac so n number of elements are there bamboo canes fodder medicine drugs and many more items we have very good tribal medicines we have we, we have siddha ayurveda which all we get resources from forest so forest resources use medicinal plants from that we are creating ayurvedic and siddha medicines it is for our uh, good health so health is maintained because of forest resources so many forest lands are used for mining agriculture grazing and recreation and for development of dams then we'll move to ecological uses of forest we have seen now forest resources and what is ecological uses of forest production of oxygen one of the important ecological use the trees produce oxygen by photosynthesis which is so vital for life on this earth they are rightly called as earth's lungs then second point reducing global warming the main greenhouse gas carbon dioxide is absorbed by the forest as a raw material for photosynthesis thus forest canopy acts as a sink for carbon dioxide thereby reducing the problem of global warming caused by greenhouse gas co2 third point wildlife habitat we have animals and lot of animals and birds in the forest for that we need forest this 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 is one of the ecological use to protect animals we need forest so forest are the homes of millions of wild animals and plants about 7 million species are found in the tropical forest alone then fourth one is regulation of hydrological cycle so forest regulates hydrological cycle forested watersheds act like giant sponges absorbing the rainfall slowing down the runoff and slowly releasing the water for recharge of springs 
about 50 to 80 percent of the moisture in the air about tropical forest comes from the transpiration which helps in bringing rains. So cycle of rainfall, rainfall is created by forest that is what we want to say. Rain should be there in a frequent interval to balance the heat in the environment. For that we need forest. So this is one of the ecological use. Food resources means all commodities and products simple mixed or compound or complements to such commodities or products that are capable of being ingested by either human beings or animals. We need food because it provides us with nutrients like carbohydrates, fats, proteins and minerals which are necessary for the growth and development of our body. The food we eat is obtained from both plants and animals. So what are other food, re food resources? From where we get food resources, we get food resources from forest only. And by, by how we get food resources? By plants and animals only we get food resources. So plants are a source of wide variety of nutrients required to keep the human body in perfect working condition. Humans consume everything from fruits, flowers, even, even the stem of some plants, leaves and stem like lettuce celery, roots of some plants like carrots, beetroot and seeds like wheat, rice etc. So all food comes from plants. Even animals depend on plants. Hence we obtain food from plants directly or indirectly. The reason one is advised to consume fruits and vegetables on a daily basis is that it is a source of rich nutrients. So food resources we get only from forests only from nature, only from a good environment. So we, for the betterment of human survival, we need good food every day. See coconut is a good food, fruits, good food, plants, good food, vegetables. How we get vegetables? Only through plants. So vegetables are obtained from the plants. From roots we get radish, turnip, carrot, beetroot. From stem we get potato and ginger. From leaves we get spinach, cabbage, lettuce. From flowers we get broccoli and cauliflower. The fruits are a healthy source. We get orange, mango, apple, pineapple, grapes, watermelon, etc. etc. All, all fruits are consumed by humans. We get cereals, tea, coffee, oil and spices from forest, forest resources. So cereals include rice, wheat, maize, jowar, barley etc. These are a rich source of nutrients provided by the plants. Coffee and tea are widely grown in the southern parts of India. We have tea estate in Kodaikanal. We have tea estate in Uti. We have tea estate in Kurg. So we have a lot of tea and coffee estates in hill stations. These are all obtained from the plants. Not just these. Sugar is also obtained from the plants. So oil can be extracted from the seeds and leaves of the plants. Some of the plants producing oil are castor, mustard and sunflower. So like that we get cinnamon, cardamom, pepper, clove, cumin seeds and ginger are obtained from the plants and used for cooking purposes. How we get food from animals that is another, another dimension. What we have seen now food we got from natural resources and food got from forest resources. But in the same way, how we get food from animals? So animal products are used as food directly or indirectly, milk, egg and meat. Animal products too are a rich source of nutrients. Food chain is composed of exactly these animals sorting with organisms that use the energy of the sun to affect that which the organisms are predators and rely on producers. So we have sheep, we have cow, we have pork. We have fish, lot of sea products, we eat as resource, food resources. So chicken, duck, geese and quails are raised for eggs and meat. The egg is a rich source of protein and vitamin. Let's move to legal issues in the environment. We have seen so far about the resources from plants and animals and forest resources and ecological uses of forest. Now we will move to the legal provision. We need legal provision 
for our environment. Otherwise, we cannot maintain our environment and forest also. We need legal provision. Because everyday human activity in, in manufacturing, in industrial development, in science and technology labs, we are doing every activity. So, for that, we need legal. So, environment impact assessment is one of the legal aspects. Can be defined as study of study to predict the effect of a proposed activity, project on the environment, a decision making tool. So, environmental impact assessment is a decision making tool. We need this environmental impact assessment before starting any project design, before before constructing any plant, before constructing any atomic resources, nuclear resources, scientific labs. Research and development, we need to construct a lot of uh, factories and uh, labs. A lot of industrial developments are there. So, for that, whether to have this place to be converted into a plant or, or a scientific lab, we need to assess the place in the environmental aspect. For that environmental aspect, we need that environmental assessment. For example, I will give one example. Take for, a, take for example, Bhopal plant, fertilizer plant. Proper environmental assessment has not been carried out in the planning of Bhopal fertilizer plant. That's why we had a lot of uh, confusion and lot of uh, loss. We have we have lost a lot of human beings and also a good place in Bhopal. It is polluted. So environment assessment gives knowledge about the place, what to do and what not to do. The positive and negative situation of the plants where we are going to construct something, where some new developments are coming. For that, we have to assess the place. It is a process organized by environment department in my ministry of environment. So, environmental impact assessment was done by environment department. It is an application. So, anybody want to do some new construction should apply for environmental impact assessment. And it, 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 it also helps to give information to the public. It also gives knowledge to the public about the place of construction, about the situation in the place of new developments and in the place of new project design. So, people will, will, will also get knowledge about the construction. People get alert. People get awareness about the project, new projects. They get awareness. So, it gives awareness. So, it is one of the important legal application. It systematically examines both beneficial and adverse consequences of the project and ensures that these effects are taken into account during project design. It helps to identify possible environmental effects of the proposed project, proposes measures to mitigate adverse effects and predicts whether there will be significant adverse environmental effects. Even after the mitigation, is implemented. So, this environmental impact is a must to the society. After this, see a lot of developments are there in the Environmental Protection Act. In 1986, the Environmental Protection Act was introduced. The Environment Protection Act 1986 empowers the Government of India to state the requirement of public participation in the process of environmental protection. So, public were involved in the process of environment only because of the Environmental Protection Act. They are given information, they are involved to share their ideas. Public are given opportunity to share their ideas about the society, man and environment. Next thing is, we will move to that. Damages, disaster management, natural disasters, artificial disasters, etc. What is disaster management? Disaster management is a strategic planning and procedure that is administered and employed to protect critical infrastructures. So, we need to maintain our assets. For that, we need some management. So, what is disaster management? It is a policy to save the public. It is an alert, public alert. It is an integrated public alert and warning system. It is an integrated public alert and warning system. This is actually called as IPAWS, Integrated Public Alert and Warning System. It was introduced in 2011. This is one of the aspects in disaster management. National disaster management after so many natural catastrophes happened in the year 2010. So, a lot of uh, developments were there. 
what is natural disaster these disasters include flood hurricane earthquake and volcano eruptions that can have immediate impacts on human health as well as secondary impacts causing further death and suffering from floods causing landslides what is environmental emergencies another aspect these emergencies include technological or industrial accidents em environmental emergencies is you see you can say bhopal tragedy is an environmental emergency it was uh, it is created by man it is it is an accident due to human negligence involving hazardous materials also we, can, we we are creating environmental emergencies lot of safety measures should be maintained to reduce environmental emergencies in factories mostly in industrial areas in this industrial belt in manufacturing industries using uh, we are using hazardous materials so in that case we need to maintain environmental emergencies then what is complex emergencies these emergencies involve a breakdown of authority something some something happens some some shutdown some breakdown these are this these comes under complex emergencies like war like conflict situations like corona complex emergencies so pandemic emergencies comes under in the disaster management so corona and all comes under pandemic emergencies we need to monitor lot of things we have to we have seen for the past 2 3 years back we are in a major crisis in the corona pandemic so in that case we have lockdown so many days we have we were in lockdown our studies our profession our food habits everything changed so in the in that case we need disaster management we need something to be uh, look into carefully then we will move to human rights what is human rights so why environmental education is related to human rights for for human survival we need human rights for betterment of human living we need human rights we will see human rights are rights inherent to all human beings regardless of race sex nationality ethnicity language religion or any other status human rights include the right to life and liberty freedom from slavery and torture freedom of opinion and expression what are the 10 basic human rights freedom from discrimination right to equality between men and women right to life freedom from torture freedom from slavery right to liberty and security of person right to be treated with humanity in detention freedom of movement so we have seen now disaster management crisis management human rights now we will move to one of the important element in life is water water is a, is a, is a vital source for the better living so it is called as dehydrogen oxide h2 h2o is called as dehydrogen oxide so the amount of water and the water component in human body is very important see first of all we have to see what is the composition of human body with water that is what i want to insist the brain and heart are composed of 73% of water lungs are about 83% of water skin and skin contains 64% muscles and kidneys are 79% and even the bones are watery 31% see how human body is composed of water this is very very important see the brain and heart are important human body, human elements they are composed of 73% major area and lungs are 83% so the amount of water you need depends on variety of factors the climate you live in the physical activity you are and whether you are experiencing an illness or have any other health problems all affect recommended intake so we need to take frequently water in summer and also in in all climate water intake is important each day humans must consume a certain amount of water for the survival of course this varies according to the age and gender adult male needs 3 liters per day adult female needs 2.2 liters and one more thing all of the water a person needs does not have to come from drinking liquids as some of this water is composed in food we eat so we the fruits we eat the plants we eat get water content for example watermelon so got good water content sugar cane get good water content 
So a lot of other uh, natural resources, food resources we get from the forest has got water content more. So such kind of food we have to take. So what are the service by water we get? So water serves a number of essential functions, a vital nutrient to the life of every cell in the human body and also in other cells. It acts as a building material. Water acts as a building material. It regulates our internal body temperature, sweating and respiration. The carbohydrates and proteins that our bodies use as food are metabolized and transported by water in the bloodstream. It assists in flushing waste mainly through urination. Acts as a shock observer for brain, spinal cord and fetus. Water forms saliva. Water lubricates joints. Then we will move to water conservation. So main uses of water and water application we have seen. But we need to conserve water because water is important. So conservation, how to conserve water? Let us see what are the things. So water conservation is the careful use and preservation of the water supply including the quantity and quality of water utilized. Water is an essential asset for the nourishment of life. Water is an essential element for human life. Without water, nobody can survive. With the regularly expanding weight of the human population, there has been serious tension on water resources. See, we, are, we have a lot of uh, negligence. Negligence of customary water bodies like tanks and lakes, dams, water resources. We lost water. Loss of water should be maintained. We, we need to protect. That's why we are constructing dams. To storage water, we are constructing dams. There are a lot of dams. So these dams saves water for a period of time and it has been used for a later period in times of shortage to reduce water scarcity. So we need to conserve water. What is water resources management? What are the assessment we have by using water? We need water for health. We need water for agriculture. We need water for fisheries, we need water for drought mitigation, we need water for mitigating flood losses, we need water for irrigation and drainage, we need water for industrial and domestic supply, urban and suburban drainage, energy production, preservation of aquatic ecosystems. So lot of resources management we need related to water. So water is at the center of economic and social development. It is vital to maintain health, grow food, generate energy, manage the environment, create jobs. So water availability and management impacts whether poor girls are educated, whether cities are healthy places to live, whether growing industries or poor villages can stand the impacts of floods or droughts. So water is the major factor in social life. So what we will see how countries are developing water resources. See, most countries are placing unprecedented pressure on water resources. The global population is growing every day and we need, and we need more water resources. We have a short, shortfall of 40% water before 2030. We, need, we have chronic water scarcity, hydrological uncertainty, extreme weather events, floods and droughts. These are the threats we have. So for that, we need water resources management to be monitored effectively in everyday life. Let's move to food chain and food web. This visual shows clearly food chain versus food web. See, producers, primary consumer, secondary consumer, territory consumer, final consumers, then decomposers. This is a chain. And regarding the food web, how fox, rabbit, mouse, hawk, snake, birds are interrelated in the food habits. So these visual I think can explain food chain and food web. It is a important in ecosystem. Food chain and food web is you know, to understand ecosystem we need food chain and food webs. Each organism in an ecosystem occupies a specific tropic level or position in the food chain or web. Let's move to another important topic endangered spices in India. It is very important. We have a lot of spices, we have a lot of animals and birds. We have sanctuaries, national parks which maintain animal habitats. But even though we have animal habitats, 
like Mudumalai, Gir forest in Gujarat. Still we have loss of animals and birds in everyday life. So how to solve this loss of animals and birds? We need to maintain resources for, for the protection of animals and birds. So in that case I want to introduce two important endangered species. As India is one of the most densely populated countries in the world, human activity and land development are unsurprisingly rampant in this nation. So one of the endangered species, Bengal tiger, it is it is uh, going down. The animal is uh, animal count is going down. So Bengal tigers account for about half of the world's total tiger population. Seventy percent of which can be found living in India. Though this big cat is an adaptable animal that can live in various habitats including forests, mangroves and wetlands. It lives in both heat and cold temperatures. Now it is, now the count is very less. So this has to be monitored. We have to protect animals. So another important uh, animal is called Asiatic lion. Asiatic lion is about 10 to 20 percent smaller than its African cousins with a larger tail, tuft and a distinctly belly fold. As the name suggests, the Asiatic lion was historically native across the Southwest Asia to Eastern India. This spice also, this animal count is also going down. Now only about 500 to 650 individuals are left in the country. It, is, it lives in gear forest. Even though gear forest is maintaining Asiatic lion, many farmers still use crude and illegal electrical fences to protect their crops where this Asiatic line often gets caught up and also it gets caught up in the well, open well. In open well it gets drowned. So these are all, uh, these processes were done by farmers. So farmers to change their attitude and restrict these kind of uh, activities to preserve our endangered spices. So we have seen Asiatic lion Beng and Bengal tiger and other endangered spices are also there. Let's move to the Effects of fertilizers and pesticides. This is very, very important. We need fertilizers, but we need natural fertilizers, but we don't need chemical fertilizers. So chemical fertilizers gives a lot of side effects. Spoils the soil, reduces fertility, pollutes air and water, emits greenhouse gases, create health and environmental risk. So we need to Reduce chemical fertilizers. See, this is one of the point I want to hear. I want to tell the Bhopal factory is re related to fertilizer because it is a fertilizer fertilizer factory. Factory. It is a product. Fertilizer product was manufactured in Bhopal uh, factory by using hazardous chemicals, very dangerous chemicals. Only because of that only. We got a major accident in Bhopal 35 years back. So we need to concentrate on these pesticides and fertilizers for the do's and don'ts. So most of the fertilizer applied to the soil is washed away or broken down by bacteria, releasing the strong greenhouse gas nitrous oxide into the environment. So it creates pesticides, not only kills insects, but also kills animal and human life. It also kills human life. Lock Lot of side effects are there in using pesticides. Long term effects like cancer and reproductive harm we get through fertilizers and pesticides. See, one of the book I want to tell you here which wrote about fertilizers and pesticides. So pesticide is about pesticides. Silent Spring is a book written by Raisel Garson, woman scientist in 1962. Gave important valid points about pesticides. The usage of pesticide in the US during the 60s was very dangerous and Raisel Garson gave valid information to solve the issues. He proved with scientific resources and fought with chemical factories to reduce the manufacturing of pesticides and fertilizers. Spraying chemicals to control insect population can also kill birds, said by Raisel Garson. Chemicals travel not only through the environment but through food chains. Carson and her book Silent Spring are frequently cited as the catalyst that inspired the environmental movement that began in the 1960s, which gained national and international momentum by the 1970s. So, Raisel Carson plays one of the major role in environmental education. He educated human 
by writing the book Silent Spring. This is also translated in Tamil as Mauna Vasantham. It is available in Chennai. This book is available in Chennai. A better book which creates awareness on environmental science and environmental education. Let us read Silent Springs. Let's move to global warming and climate change. An important area in the climate change. Within the Earth's atmosphere, accumulating greenhouse gases like water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide and ozone are the gases within the atmosphere that absorb and emit heat radiation. Increasing or decreasing amounts of greenhouse gases within the atmosphere act to either hold or release more or the heat from the sun. So we get more hot temperature. We, we are living in the summer now. Our temperature is very hot. And what in what way are you are maintaining this? How global warming is maintained? Our atmosphere is getting hotter and hotter, more turbulent and more unpredictable because of the boiling and churning effect caused by the heat trapping greenhouse gases within the upper layers of our atmosphere. So this has to be considered important. See this is actually created by the increase in the average global temperature of the earth. Along with our currently increasing average global temperature, some parts of the earth may actually get cool, colder while other parts get warmer. So greenhouse gas caused atmospheric heating and education also increase the unpredictability of the weather and climate and dramatically increase the severity, scale and frequency of storms, droughts, wildlife and extreme temperatures. So it creates lot of uh, natural disasters. Then what is ecological pyramids? A pyramid is insists about territory consumers, a visual shown here, secondary consumers, primary consumers and producers. It's a graphical representation developed by this theory was developed by Raymond Lindman and Ellen Atchison. The ecological pyramid is additionally known as the energy pyramid. The lower part of the pyramid, which is likewise the broadest part, is involved by the ones at the main tropic level, that is the producers. Higher level of the pyramid is involved in by primary consumers, secondary and the territory consumers. We have seen now lot of things about disasters. Some important natural disasters I wanted to insist. Tsunami and Gajab cyclone. What happened? We will see. Natural catastrophe in India, many of them related to the climate of India, caused massive losses of life and property. Droughts, flash floods, cyclones, avalanches, landslides, broadbed, torrential rains and snowstorms pose the greatest threat. A natural disaster might be caused by earthquake, flooding, volcanic eruption, landslides and hurricanes. So natural disasters creates lot of environmental issues. See some of the visuals I am showing here during tsunami 2004. What happened in southern states? See it is an important incident which took lot of human life which happened on 26th December 2004. One of the world's deadliest tsunami killed over 2,30,000 people in 14 different countries. It affected mostly in Indonesia, originated in the Indian Ocean and wreaked havoc on multiple countries including India. Damages of 2004 tsunami in Chennai, Marina Beach. See the Marina Beach, water logging in Chennai, Marina. This is Gaja cyclone damages. Gaja cyclone damages. So something severe during Gaja cyclone. See Gaja was cyclone was happened in 2018. Severe cyclone storm Gaja originated as a low pressure storm over the Gulf of Thailand. The weak system intensified into a depression over the Bay of Bengal on November 10, 2018 and further intensified to a cyclonic storm on November 11 being classified Gaja. Cyclone Gaja made landfall in South India at Vedaranyam and Tamil Nadu. So it is actually 100 to 120 km speed. Highest sustained speed was recorded in Adhiramapatinam at 165 km and 160 km in Muthupet. These are the southern districts affected by Cyclone Gaja. Eight districts of Tamil Nadu, namely Nagapatinam, Tanjavur, Tiruvaru, Pudukotai, Karekal and Kadalu, Tirchi and Ramanadapuram may mostly affected. Cyclone storm Gaja is a major setback in the Tamil Nadu, damaged a lot of trees in Vadaranyam, lot of plants 
coconut farms, plantation damage, create a lot of uh, negative impacts to farmers to recover again. It's one of the major disaster. So these things can be managed only through environmental education. This, this, this kind of uh, issues can be solved only through environmental education. That's why uh, I insist environmental education to be part of academy for every human being. One important thing it is uh, existing everywhere in the forest areas, human wildlife conflict. This human wildlife conflict will always exist as our world becomes increasingly crowded. However, effective, well planned management and holistic and integrated approaches can reduce and minimize conflict in the long term. Human wildlife is a global wildlife conflict is a global issue because wherever a human ha animal habitat is there, animal habitat is there, where human beings are having their residential areas. So in that case, both human and animals are sharing the same place. So in that condition, automatically human wildlife con conflict is occurs. So to solve this, we should have human coexistence. Human and uh, animal coexistence should be there. Both should have understanding. Both should tolerate the issues. Human should have tolerance for the well-being of nature. So we need global cooperation for human wildlife conflict. It is an humanitarian issue as it is a conservation concern affecting the income of farmers, herders and artists, artisanal fishers, particularly those with incomes below the poverty line. In addition to direct loss to communities, human wildlife conflict indirectly impacts people all over the world through the pressure it places on the global supply chain and production of agricultural goods. Next thing is HWC, consumption of crops by wild herbivores. This human wildlife conflict includes consumption of crops by wild herbivores, killing of livestock by wild predators, damage to infrastructure and equipment, houses and water shortage can involve human injury and death. So another point I, I want to say here about is SMART is a software, set of software, spatial monitoring and reporting tool. SMART can help standardize and streamline data collection, analysis and reporting. It is a facility to understand environment and wildlife. SMART platform consists of set of software and analysis tools designed to help conservationists manage and protect wildlife and wild places. It is a open source, non-proprietary and freely available. Finally, we will conclude <coughs> with information technology, environment and human health. See, today information technology that is ICT plays a major role in the human welfare. Lot of information, data, communication sharing happens in the digital mode. So, we have a lo lot of resources through information technology for environment, specifically for environment and human health. Lot of organizations are involved in this. Just like that, I will explain here. National Management Information System through this NIMS, NMIS. We have a lot of data available on environment and human health. And another organization, Environmental Information System, NBIS. So, this NBIS was designed to collect environmental information throughout India on wildlife, on environmental issues, on environmental education. So it is a government uh, system to provide environmental awareness throughout India, publishing booklets, conducting workshops to have a valid uh, environmental content. Then remote sensing and geographical information system through this uh, information technology we can find out wildlife habitats, forest areas and the details regarding environmental content. We can monitor throughout India environmental resources, forest areas, wildlife habitats through this remote sensing system. And another one, geographical information system. This is also another information concept. Through this we can avail information 
on environment data can be collected through this on animals forest resources climate change and so many other related to environment then world wide web you already you know that this is a organization which provides information and a government uh, system regarding environment and wildlife so like that information technology now gives lot of uh, resources for human welfare and human development today internet we can have whatever information to be updated is available we can browse lot of information on environment and human health so technology has given a fantastic resources to update the information and to share the information to all over india especially nmis as doing a fantastic job on environmental awareness they print newsletters they conduct workshops seminars on environmental awareness i think this environmental education lecture is a valid one for the students with lot of informations provided to create awareness so society in the society learning on environment is mandatory learning on environment is mandatory improving environmental understanding having civic interest is very much useful for the betterment of the whole we will have a holistic approach to save our animals plants wildlife habitats forest areas and natural resources thank you